Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'm going to do a disassembly for you of a pretty interesting little knife, and that's this little guy, Todd Begg Steelcraft Mini Bodega. Um, I want to thank first and foremost my buddy Plumman for sending this guy along, because holy crap, it's a cool little knife. I'm really, really looking forward to taking this apart. One of the interesting things about this knife from a taking it apart perspective is that it's using ceramic IKBS. IKBS means Icomacoth Bearing System. But really what it means is that the bearings in there are loose, and so they're likely to roll everywhere. So I have started off by constructing an IKBS jail using a baking silicone baking thing and a cloth of inside of it. And the goal here is that this should prevent any of these bearings from rolling away as I'm working on it, so long as I am smart about things. And it is my intention to be smart about things. Um, on a knife like this, particularly one with uh, some value both to the person and in general, I tend to be very, very cautious. And so, you know, for instance, I'm being very careful to make sure that I'm using the right bit everywhere that I can. That's something I always try to do, but I, I'm really extra cautious here. Um, and I'm extra cautious. This is a Torx T8 that I'm using here. I'm just going to be very, very slow and methodical about this even more so than my normal knives, because the last thing I want to do is either strip a screw, which would be bad, or scratch up this beautiful anodization on the titanium here. There we go, so that's popped out, beautiful. There we go. It also means that I'm going to play this one safe, so I'm probably not going to take off, for instance, the uh, the handle screw. Probably not going to lift off the back spacer, because it's a titanium spacer. There's not going to be rust issues in between there. And I would just as soon, if it doesn't need to be unscrewed, not unscrew it. There we go. So we've got these three handle screws pulled out. The pivot screw is on the other side, and I'll have to remember that for the reassembly process. And could it be... My god, it is. They're using the same size driver. Hey, excellent. Well done there, Steelcraft. Okay, now I'm entering the danger zone. Um, because at this point, once I remove pressure from the pivot, the IKBS balls have the opportunity to go everywhere. So I've removed the pivot screw now, and I'm just gingerly setting this guy down. Um, on, a, on a frame lock knife, you have always the concern that the frame itself will kind of, the frame lock will push the scales apart and suddenly everything explodes everywhere in a hail of ball bearings. So um, that's why I'm being very careful and methodical here. Let's see if I can't pop this up. The fact that this isn't popping out easily is a sign of good tolerances, but there we go. Looks like we have achieved some separation here. Now, interestingly, oh, cool. So there are backspacer pins inside here that I'm able to see. But the problem is getting the rest of this separated out. Okay. Come on now. Just making sure I'm not missing anything. Again, I'm being really overly careful here just to make sure that Plumman's knife comes out of this looking just as good as it went in. Come on now. Pop it open there, buddy. There we go. All righty. So I've separated out the backspacer, and I'm just going to lift off the lock bar half, and here we are. Hey, that was actually pretty straightforward. So, um, we can see here that the backspacer is still screwed in. So, there are screws on the other side there, and again, I'm not taking those out. I, it's not worth risking that. Um, here we've got some backspacer pins, which is a really nice little touch, honestly, because the backspacer is secured in three places here, but it's also secured in three more over here. So, I like that a lot. There is interior milling here, which will reduce the weight of the knife overall, which is good. There's a lock bar insert. And interestingly, I'm going to flip this over gingerly so I don't lose IKBS bearings. Um, the screws for the lock bar insert are flush out here and screwed in here. That's kind of nice. That's well done right there. Somebody gave a damn. I'm going to lift the blade off of here. And of course, with IKBS, you know that you're going to be carrying some bearings. Hey, cool. I wasn't. Um, so that's nice. And all the bearings have stayed put, which is really kind of them. 
but immediately, immediately, I see that there is all sorts of junk going on up in here. So I'm gonna go on ahead and do a little bit of cleaning off first. Um, because this is a Lona knife, I'm actually, hold on just a second, guys. Because this is a Lona knife, and I'm not 100% sure what all the materials are, and I want to be a little extra careful, I'm going to go ahead and just use some rubbing alcohol here to clean this off and degrease. I know that's not going to hurt anything. And again, trying to be extra careful here. All righty, cleaning off the blade first and just removing that grease. That grease was kind of nasty, I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure what they used. But uh, it wasn't the gem, that's for sure. Now, what I'm going to try and do is being very careful to remain within my IKBS jail here. I'm going to work those balls right out. Oh boy, this ain't going well in terms of speech. So I'm just going to see if I can get those to drop on down. Pardon me, everybody, just waiting for the balls to drop. See the New Year's Eve uh, puberty. Okay. That was a bad joke there, Nick. Alrighty. Slowly but surely. And now I've got three IKBS balls over there. I'll chase these two out. Oh, got a couple of stragglers. This is why you make sure that until you have all of the balls accounted for and you have checked for your hands, you stay inside the IKBS jail here. Okay, so I see no IKBS on my hands, which is good. So I'm going to use a different paper towel, alcoholize it a little bit, and do a little cleaning up inside the pivot area here. Just making sure. There we go. There we go. And right now I am coating a Q-tip with some alcohol and just using it to get up in there. Degrees a little bit. Nice. And also using it to clean the lock bar insert there. Everything else looks pretty good here, so I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to go ahead and take this scale and put it aside for a second. Now, what I'm going to do is just use this alcohol, which is still down here, to clean the IKBS balls off. All I am doing here, again, being very careful to remain within the IKBS jail, all I'm doing is rolling these balls around on this paper towel, letting the towel absorb whatever crud and grease, whatever is on there, with the idea that eventually these ceramic little balls here will be clean. Okay, so now I'm going to try and get these balls off the paper towel. Checking my hands. Come on now. There we go. So we have one little crop of IKBS balls that I'm going to move over into the corner here. Hands are cool. Okay, good. Now the other side. We have an internal stop pin here. Internal stop pins always do tend to collect junk, which is why you definitely want to service these knives every so often. If not, you may get to a situation where there's so much junk collected on your stop pin or inside this track that the knife will not uh, lock properly, and that's just no good. Let's see if this pivot's going to pop out for us. There it went. I've greased my finger, but no bearings on it yet. So now... I've removed the pivot. I want to be very careful. Whoa there. Lower that down. Be very careful not to get an IKBS ball inside the pivot. It's not the end of the world if it happens, but if it happens and you don't know about it, particularly with a ceramic ball, you could not only lose a uh, ball, but you could have some trouble with the pivot. And everybody wants to have the proper number of balls. Okay. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a little more alcohol down here. Beautiful. And slowly coerce the rest of them out of here. 
Come on now. And again, at this point, being very careful not to drop any, not to have them go anywhere. I feel like I want at some point in my life an IKBS clean room. Everything is white and smooth and rolls towards the center of the room. So that if I lose an IKBS ball, I will know exactly where to find it. Okay, beautiful. So uh, the IKBS are now gone. My hands are clear. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe down the pivot here. Well, wipe down the bearing race. And I've still got my... Um, alcohol covered swab so I'll go ahead and clear out this area in the center beautiful stop pinhole everything else looks pretty good to go here so I'm gonna go ahead and again put this aside and now I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time where I'm just gonna go ahead and roll these around on the paper towel and that'll degrease them which is beautiful they used a very, well, I don't know, it's very heavy, but they used a fairly heavy grease here in reassembling this knife or assembling it the first damn time. Okay, checking for IKBS real quick. And unfortunately, that tends to make the action a little bit less inspiring than it often can otherwise be. So not a, not a huge fan there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead put just down a little bit of frog lube. I'm, I'm just really putting a little bit on my finger here. I'm going to wipe down the blade on the inside here. One of my uh, viewers shot me an email recently about frog lube and petroleum-based lubricants and also about frog lube and heat, saying that in order for frog lube to really penetrate, you do need to heat the surface up, and that's, that's true. Um, if I really was serious about trying to bake in the frog lube, um, yeah, I would want to heat the surface up a little bit. For here, mostly what I'm interested in is filling any little tiny gaps. And uh, so I'm not as incredibly concerned about this. And also, I do maintain my knives regularly. So I don't need absolute, you know, bury it in the backyard sort of protection. Just cleaning out my pivot hole here, making sure that's all good to go. And cleaning out the bearing race. I'm sorry, the, um, ah, the stop in race there. Okay. So we are all set. We have our IKBS balls from one side over here and from the other side over here. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this guy from the bottom up. Oh, last thing, I got to make sure and clean my, uh, my pivot. Actually, no. As I recall, when I got this guy, the uh, top of it was the one that had the... Uh, clean stop pin. I'm not stop pin. Oh, man. The clean pivot in there. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the pivot in here. There we go. That's nice and locked in. Now, uh, comes the fun. With IKBS, in order for the bearings to stay in place at all, you need to have some degree of a grease. And so, what I'm using here is an 85 weight nano oil. And so, I'm just going to go ahead and actually in effect, flood this little area with some of the nano oil. And this is good and thick. And so this will serve basically to keep the bearings in place, as well as oiling the blade itself and whatnot. I'm going to put a little bit on here. Okay. So now the best way to go about doing this, in this case, I'm probably just going to go ahead and use these tweezers here, grab the balls one at a time, and drop them in. Picking up tiny balls with tweezers is, shall we say, a skill. I believe this is all on camera. As much as I dislike reassembling and disassembling IKBS knives, at some level, there's a joy to it. There's a complexity, there's a, I don't know. It's still ugly, and if you're not a big fan of this kind of a finicky mechanical work, then this is definitely not what you want to be doing with your life. But at the same time, IKBS is not a deal breaker to me in the same way that it is for some people. 
but a big, big part of any of this maintenance stuff is comfort level. At this point, I've done an, enough things to enough knives of my own and, frankly, now of other people's that I, I feel pretty comfortable doing things. Um, but, you know, some people may not, and that's, well, obviously that's their prerogative. And for them, IKBS is really not, oh, God, is that smooth right now. Holy crap, that's nice. Okay, so there's that. Next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is drop in the stop pin, which lands right in the middle here. Let me make sure that that's not... Okay, yeah, that's fine. And then the backspacer, the other backspacer pin is in here. Just trying to kind of plan ahead here. Um, unfortunately, the fact that the clean side of the pivot is over here makes it a little more difficult. I tend to like to reassemble a frame lock by putting the pivot in and building up on the lock side. It just reduces the amount of pressure you have to worry about. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more nano oil, the heavier weight, on your detent track here, which will, again, just kind of help keep things swinging freely. And again, it's an IKBS knife, so it's going to run wet anyways. Now, here is the big trick. IKBS, you really do need... I can get that bearing race a little cleaner. I've just pulled the end off of a Q-tip, so I've got a little, basically, stick. Yeah, I can do better than that. Hold on. I'll grab another Q-tip. Not that it's super necessary, but if it's enough of a pain with this knife that I, I want to do it right. There we go. Blow that off. We're set. Uh, so again, with the IKBS, you just need to make sure you're running good and wet. And that you got enough grease on this side to keep the bearings in there in between. So let's move this slightly and move this over. Is that still on camera? Yes, it is. Excellent. back in one at a time if I did this professionally rather than as a hobby I would want to invest in some sort of a camera system where I could do all my work looking at the monitor and zoom in and whatnot kind of like uh, the, the watch repair channel guy has going but alas you guys get my phone sitting on a paddle strap attached to a tripod over a plastic table. If you wanted high budget, then I'm afraid you didn't get it here. So at the moment, I have not yet lost any IKBS bearings. And that's... I, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a pat on the back for that. Okay, this is the scary part. Always right here. What I have to do now is mate these two. During that mating process, oh boy, I'm showing the mating process on camera, you cannot uh, let this blade go too far away or else the IKBS on the other side will fall out. And you cannot let the, um, you know, uh, any of the bearings go into the pivot hole there or else you're going to have a bad time. And you've got a sharp blade here, which just adds to the complication. And you need to make sure that your backspacer it's up just transfer that pin over there as well as your stop pin so I think I just did it that popped in the spacing looks good the blade seems to rotate which is good I'm going to take some of the pressure off the lock bar for reassembly, and I'm keeping pressure on that pivot because, oh, God, do I not want that pivot parking apart. Okay, use a little bit of blue Loctite here. Not too much, but just enough that I can really dial it in. There we go. Again, using blue Loctite. I am over tightening that right now because, well, obviously I don't want that pivot coming apart. That would be a terrible thing to have 
like ABS balls flying everywhere. The last thing you want to have happen with like ABS is the go balls up. There we go. I still will need to adjust the pivot after I've got all of these guys in. But my priority, as I said, was getting it to the point where I knew the IKBS couldn't go anywhere. There we go. So these are all in. That's good. Now let's see what the pivot looks like. So that's at maximum tightness right now. I'm going to go ahead and back it back very slightly here and see what that looks like in terms of smoothness. It's pretty smooth. Let's back it back a little more. Ah, that introduced a little blade play. Okay. go. Oh yeah, that'll do. And of course, it'll take a little while for all of the, uh, the you know, the blade and everything to just get worked in, lubed up. Oh yeah, this is good. Centering is perfect. That's good. Everything looks the way I started it. Now, the final step in any IKBS build is to look very, very carefully for any remaining IKBS balls. Looking on my tools, the tweezers, oiler, okay, gonna go ahead and lift this up. And I believe I saw and could account for every IKBS ball in here, but, you know, you always wanna make sure. Just like counting sponges when a doctor finishes a surgery to make sure that the uh, patient doesn't happen to have any, you know, sponges left in them, because that's bad. In case you're a doctor, you need to know that. Uh, this is a beautiful way to make sure that you haven't left out any IKBS. Just frog lube in the blade a little bit, make that black wash really pop. And then just wiping that off. Oh yeah. And we now have a fully maintained and serviced Todd Bag Steelcraft Mini Bodega with ceramic IKBS. A really nice action on it, that's for sure. I hope this has been interesting to you. Um Plumbin, thank you again for the loaner here. And uh, the rest of you have yourselves oh, and Plumbin too for that matter. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.